Hey there, welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast, where we are rediscovering the ancient way, and right now we are talking about what? The pattern of the suffering servant. What does it look like to walk? I mean, literally walk, not just quote a Bible verse and tell me what Yeshua said. I mean, like in real life now, what does it look like to walk like our Messiah walked? And so that's what we're talking about. I've been sharing some personal examples of how just a couple days ago I felt like the Father was drawing me to a place that we could just say verbiage that we would understand, a deeper place in Him, a deeper level of surrender, a place where He just touched my innermost man and asked for more of me. And we yield or we don't, or we miss it and ignore it, and it's just something that He will, in His kindness and patience, very likely bring around for us yet again. Um, But it would be good for us to get it the first time. Um, And so that was my day for a moment. Um, just a couple days ago, and I've been sharing in part one to review just momentarily about the value of being called to deny ourselves and the Father's purposes within it, and that that there are things that are over there, uh, uh, whether it's 100 yards or 100 miles away, that that are, are out of my periphery many times that I will never get to unless I yield in all of the opportunities to surrender my will and walk like my Messiah that lie between here and there. I believe I'm a threshold believer. I believe there are places that Father calls us in the increment that we can handle and rightly um, hold and, and walk in in obedience that he brings to us in allocated measure so that we move what? Towards more fully attaining the stature and likeness and image of his beautiful son. I believe that is our trajectory, our calling. That's why when I talk to people and like they don't study their Bible, they don't, you know, (laughs) I'm not being hard. I'm just saying I don't understand how we can profess to be Christians, believers, and, and, I, and all the things that that really means. I don't know how any individual can do that, but not actively pursue spiritual growth and maturity more than any other thing we do. There is a breakdown in my head towards that. I It feels to me like we we are squandering this this identity that we've been given. If we are not infatuated with maturation and and becoming like Messiah, I don't know why we would bother saying that's our identity. Because as I talked about this morning in the whiteboard teaching on our Facebook page, there are things to do. When, When Yeshua is talking to those who had gathered at the synagogue, I believe that's where they were, he, he's saying to them, he's, he's giving them these, these corrections. And he's saying they know them. That there's, he's, he's saying they know him. But they reference being uh, Abraham's children. And he says quite pointedly, look, if you were Abraham's children, if you were Abraham's offspring, you would be doing the works Abraham did. And so we, we know from that and from many other texts and, and things that Yeshua said, if we on the other side of our regeneration and rebirth and, and new identity, the literal new creation change, if we don't start doing something, there is no evidence that in fact we have become someone else. If we have truly been changed and moved from death to life, and our life is no longer our own, but now we have lost that life in order to pursue Messiah for his sake, and therefore we found our life, our new life, our new creation, then, friend, it's got to look like something. And if it doesn't, dare say, it never happened to begin with. That's just the harsh reality of it, and I don't know why that would be offensive, because if there's no fruit on the tree, there's something wrong with the tree. There's something wrong, and and if we truly want to be right and in good standing before the Father, we had better be willing to hear that correction and make a change accordingly, because we have no right to say 
We are the children of Abraham, and we have inherited all of the, all the promises that are made, and, and we are God's people, and we are, we are, we get, we get, we have, we have. I believe Yeshua would say, okay, well, that sounds well and good, but friend, if you were Abraham's offspring, you would be doing the works of obedience that Father Abraham did. I don't know how I got off of there, but let's let's get back, shall we? This is something that the Father showed me yesterday during that gathering that I referenced um, in part one. This is really good. We there's a song that played um, on the screen of uh, uh, thank. It's, it's just repeating. Thank you, Lord. It, it's a it's an older song. The song's irrelevant, but there you know it's like any lyric video. The, the text is on the screen, and there's some sort of video image, usually, in the background. And in the background, and of course, I'm already thinking through these things that I've already shared up to these po- this point. I was prepared to share yesterday, so that was already in my mind. I was prepared to just share my testimony of what the Father's been saying over the last 48 hours. And interestingly to me, I, I noted that in the background of this lyric video, there were mature... Um, heads of grain. There, there was like wheat in a field, and it's just blowing. You know, it looks like harvest time. And and I don't know. I, I said this yesterday. I, I don't know if the the producer of the of the lyric video did that on purpose, and like, um, because even in the present understanding of of walking now in feasts and Sabbath, you know, the, in 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 Shavuot and Pentecost, or uh, not Shavuot, um, Sukkot tabernacles you're you're talking about the end of the harvest season and it's a rejoicing time and you're 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 in a sense you're just resting in the booths in the tents and and you're just recounting the awesome works of Yahweh being your provision and, and bringing you everything you need even in the natural and in that you of course are postured to reflect back in the in the fall season on the previous season of thank you lord thank you father you provided us everything we need we sit here in a posture of looking back and being thankful and so this is this is something that i submitted to the group yesterday and i do to you as well for consideration that I feel like the Father was saying as i saw the images of the harvest and we're repeating this song saying thank you and then here are my thoughts towards it. In light of what I'm presenting, of suffering, self-denial, it's easy to say thank you during the harvest season. But what about seed time? What about the season when you're turning over the ground? What about the laboring season? What about the sweating Will you, will I, will we, will the body who rejoices when God does something so great, will we equally cry out thank you then in the sweating, in the toiling, in the seed planting, in the turning of the ground? Will we cry out thank you then in that season? And if so, will it merely be words or will it be from the same deep place of thankfulness and reflection as during the joy of the harvest? And I think that's a valid question. It is to me. Am I so thankful in the season of labor as I am on the other side when the blessing has already come in and I'm reaping the reward of it? I believe it would please the Father, like Yeshua, and in his pattern, that throughout the entire process of self-denial, we are found looking to him, pointing to him, rejoicing over him and his handiwork. So let's talk about this. Isaiah 53, um, maybe 3 through 12. And I'm just going to read it quickly because we've got, to, we've got to get moving here. I've got to get out of here and go do some other stuff today. So this man, can we say Yeshua? Surely we can. This suffering servant in Isaiah chapter 53 that the, the prophet saw, that he saw this stuff unfold. And we know Yeshua quoted several of these things as well in his own life. He knew who he was. This man was despised and he was forsaken of men. 
He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men um, would hide their face. He was despised, and we didn't esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of Yahweh, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. Now, of course, pause. This sounds exactly like a cross um, description. Yes, no argument that. Because you may wonder, you may think I'm trying to disprove that here in a moment, and I'm not doing that. So just just try to pay attention to the specifics of what, I've, of what I want to present. This man, Yeshua, we will say, was pierced through for our transgressions. And the key in on this. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray, each one turned to his own way. But Yahweh has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed, afflicted. He did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter and a sheep silent before its shearers. He did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And for his generation, and as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due, his grave was assigned with wicked men. Yet he was with a rich man in his death. Let's skip down a little bit. Verse 10. The father was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Let's just stop there. There's two things I want to point out, and then I want to make that correlation I referenced earlier, putting two verses side by side, because I read that this morning. I read it yesterday, and I read it again this morning. I'm journaling some thoughts towards it, and I thought, I've got to look into this word. Um, the Lord was pleased to crush him. I thought, oh, man, this sounds like Psalm chapter 51. And so I did some word study of this, and I found this Hebrew word, dacha, dacha. And sure enough, it's the same. So let's look at that real quick. What is it? Psalm 51? Ugh, i to go the wrong way. Psalm chapter 51. I don't even have it marked. I told you I was very unprepared. I warned you at the beginning. Uh, verse 17. The sacrifices of Yahweh are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O Yah, you will not despise. Interesting, is it not? And so, as I was reading Isaiah 53, Psalm 51, uh, 17 is one of my main things. We've talked about that for years in our household and among other brothers in my life. About willing ourselves to the crushing, to the, the breaking of our will in our literal self. And I've shared this on the program, golly, how, how many times? And in every format, when I stand in front of anyone and talk, or whether I, I whatever, stuff I've written over the years, that the proper understanding of this dacha, it is being crushed to powder. And if you can imagine your life as a, as a finished clay vessel, already um, baked and hard and, and serving a, a, a function, you know, in its finished form. If you if you just merely took a, a hammer and hit that vessel, it would crack into maybe what four, five, six pieces, likely, and it could be assembled back together. It could be reassembled. It could be glued. It could be you know we could go down this road with however we wanted to. It could be reformed, and it would possibly even serve its purpose, but at the very least, it would still have a semblance of looking like it did previous. Now, through this understanding of dacha, which we see in Isaiah chapter 53 and Psalm chapter 51, among other places, is this crushing to powder. In other words, I like this visual now. Pay attention, please. I like this visual. If you can imagine your life as that vessel 
You are given options, I would say, of what level of suffering you are willing to endure. Do you want a crack and a chunk off of you? And every once in a while you put it back on and put it back together and you're still you. You're still in control. You're still looking good on the outside. You're still got it all together, which is really a Christian motto. We can't look like we're failing. We can't look broken. We have to look all together because in all we, in Christ we can do all things. And we, we, we twist all these things to, to cause us to be pretenders to be actors who say, well, the whole world's looking at us. We've got to be godly. We've got to be all together. We have to be good. Friend, no way. We've missed the whole point. Yeshua himself, the suffering servant, was crushed by the Father. It pleased the Father to crush him. Okay? And again, the word that we've looked at, and it's even back here in measure in, uh, in earlier in 53 that we read, he was crushed for our iniquities, okay? And so uh, what I'm saying is I believe the, the desire of, of the Father is for anyone who will follow in the likeness of his Son is to do likewise, which is to be obliterated into something that cannot be put back together and take on a form that it did previous. The desire of the Father that would please him for us, like it pleased him to see in his Son, is to be broken down and crushed through the suffering so that we can be literally destroyed in the flesh, in our carnality, in our former Adamic nature, so that we can be whatever the potter wants us to be. It is up to him now. My former identity, the ways of the nations that guided my every decision, my sin, my natural, carnal, flesh man, where is he? Where is he? In another increment for me, two days ago, I got crushed some more, and I remain in the crushing. And that's the thing that I'll end up concluding this with, is that I realized I've been journaling more. I've been praying without ceasing. I've been crying out for wisdom that we started talking about about 60 days ago, the biblical pattern of crying out actively for wisdom with great ongoing regularity. I'm reading the Word. I'm, I'm thinking about, about things above and not things down below. I'm growing. I feel like I'm walking more spiritual than I am natural. And then I realized, <laughs> I've been suffering again. I've been in a season of suffering, and I've embraced it, and I have willed myself to say, you know what, Father, turn up the heat. I'm right here, and I'm not getting out. Not turn up the heat, what do you have, God? Not that now, that's foolishness. It's not how it works. That's not how a father treats his children. But instead, Father, my desire is for the finished product in this segment of my journey. And so I remain in the suffering. And in the pattern of the suffering servant, who again, to get back where we started and finish where we began, he willed himself to be a servant of all. We have no leg to stand on to stand up for ourselves. And this must be the devil. That's my favorite. Oh, I'm having a hard time, brother. Oh, man, what's going on? Oh, it's, just, it's just the devil after me. After me again. Well, what's going on? You might name some things that are just troublesome and hard and trials. And Well, friend, well, who says that's the devil? And if you want to be if you want to be really like deeply biblical, let's say it's the devil, but it's the father's plan orchestrating it for your good to be crushed. <laughs> so even that, even if that's true, if that's really true and not just something we throw around, oh the devil's really after me. Even if that's true, then yes and amen. It's to perfect me. 
Imagine Yeshua taken up to the highest part of the city and he overlooks the land and the devil himself, Hasatan, says, I could give you all this, all of this. <laughs> or the temptations in the garden and, and anguish. <laughs> The hunger of his belly literally crying out for natural food. And the rock begins to look like a buttered roll. <laughs> and Yeshua, imagine Yeshua saying, I'm sorry, Father. The devil is just really hard on me. Please. We're pathetic, y'all. We're pathetic excuse makers to avoid suffering. I'm here, I'm saying, listen, I'm suffering. I'm suffering. It's not exalting myself to a pedestal. Do you read Paul? And I'm not Paul, but do you read him say, man, how dare he say that arrogant man? Who's he think he is telling me that he's this or that? I'm just telling you in this moment, be encouraged by this broadcast that someone is laboring to endure and laboring to suffer in the pattern of my Messiah King because I believe it is worth it all. It's worth it. Absolutely. And I'm telling you that specifically to say I'm seeing fruit already yet again because the patterns of my life that I can look at to bring this to an end, the patterns of my life that I look back upon where I grew the most, matured the most, was most spiritually active, communed with the Father the most, studied the Word of God the most, talked to my wife and tried to wash her with the water of the word the most, when I instructed my son the most, this could go on forever, was when I am willingly submitting to a trial season and the suffering. Period. Hands down every time. And so I say this directly, friend. If you are an avoider of suffering, you are missing out on learning obedience like the, like the suffering servant Yeshua. Because are we in any way any better than he or above that pattern? If the very Son of God, if the Emmanuel himself had to learn obedience through the things that he suffered, how in the world will we ever learn obedience? I say we will not. So let's start here. Let's start simple as we bring this to a close. How obedient are you? It might be directly related to your suffering and your serving. I believe, I believe Isaiah 53 makes that connection, just to close the door on this. Suffering and serving are like this. Because again, Yeshua emptied himself out to serve. Not just washing feet of natural men, no, y'all. That, that's a part of it, yes. A component, surely, yes. But that and so much more. When we're suffering, we will most likely be found serving. And when we're suffering, we will become obedient children. So friends, that's my, I feel like it's an encouragement to embrace these hard things that come to our life and start asking ourselves, do I flee? Do I run and hide? Do I avoid these things that Father is bringing to me for my good to accomplish His purposes in me? Am I missing out on becoming obedient because I'm not willing to suffer? I would say that it's very likely that all of us have that in some increment present in our lives today. So let's get it out. Let's get it out. And here we are now. This is Passover season, man. Get the leaven out of there. Get it out. It's swelling up. It's puffing up. It's making us say, no, I'm more than an overcomer. We'll even use Bible verses to justify avoidance of hard things that we are called to go through and not necessarily jump over because we're so victorious in Christ. Maybe it's time to endure and to be like our suffering servant. Thank you for watching. This has been the Path to Zion podcast. We're rediscovering the ancient way. Always find our audio only at pathtozion.com. 
and our YouTube channel here, of course. Share it with others if you find it encouraging. Listen, prayerfully, prayerfully ask the Father, who needs to hear this? If this spoke to you, who needs to hear this? Who's in a trial? Who's in a suffering season? Who could be encouraged by this dude down there in that little seven by seven room talking about how he's enduring and suffering and seeing fruit because the promises of the word of God are true? Who needs to hear it? Think about that, won't you? And send them a link because I... That's what this is about. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, Podcast at gmail.com is the way to do it. I've said this for the last two years. We'll try to come to where you are. We'll sit with you. We'll pray. We'll listen. We'll give counsel if the Father speaks. I don't know. Let us know. Reach out. Uh, communicate with us if you would like to do that. So thank you so much for watching. We'll be back. Hopefully, man, more of these are going to churn out. we got a whole lot of stuff brewing. Thank you for watching. Amen.